So it's been one year since I have started YouTube. <laughs> So I think this video has been kind of a long time coming. Well, obviously it's been a year, but I really like sharing with you my art process and my art journey and growing my business and how I've done that. And so I thought it'd be really interesting to share with you how the past year has been for me doing YouTube. Because YouTube, when I first started out, was a brand new thing for me. Hadn't really done YouTube ever. Definitely not showing my face on camera, so that was a first. But yeah, I just kind of want to share with you what it's been like where I started, where we are now, and I'll also share with you about like, you know, getting monetized and how much money I make each month. I think that'll be really interesting for a lot of you who are interested in using YouTube to grow your channel or even try to make money in the future. So just to give a little bit of background, my main platform before using YouTube was Instagram and actually still is Instagram. I mainly do most of my social media and marketing and all those things on Instagram is the platform that I know most. YouTube is kind of like the secondary one that I'm trying to get used to. And TikTok is that one I keep trying to get into and I still just don't get it. I just don't get it. And the reason I bring this up is because I think it's important to know that when I started YouTube, I already had some following already on Instagram. I wasn't coming completely new to social media. At the time when I started my YouTube channel, I was sitting, I think around 15,000 followers on Instagram. So I wasn't coming to YouTube just like completely fresh. I did have a support group on Instagram who then came to YouTube to support me here. Well, the reason I started my YouTube, and I think the same reason for many of you who will want to start YouTube, is that I wanted to grow my audience. I wanted to try another platform. I didn't want to rely solely on Instagram. And I saw a lot of potential on YouTube and what other artists were doing. I was thinking like, hey, I, I wanna do that too. I wanna see, I wanna see what I, I can do with it. When I started, I I did a lot of research actually. I looked at how other people grew their YouTube channels. I used YouTube as a resource for figuring out how other people did it. I watched a lot of Catherine Manning's videos and I still watch her videos. Highly, highly recommend watching her videos. And so I had an idea of how much work it would be and the amount of commitment I would have to put in. So I wasn't going in with this totally blind. I had like a plan and really I had two main goals when I was starting my YouTube. My first goal was that I wanted to make a video every single week and my second goal was that I wanted to get monetized within a year. I knew that it was going to be a commitment on top of, you know, my full-time job, my side art business, managing my social media and my shop and all those things. But it was something that I really wanted to try and like I, I was committed to this. I really, really wanted to do this. So my very first video in this official journey of doing YouTube for a year was a draw with me video. Up until that point, I don't think I had ever shown my face really online. I had never said anything. And when I first started out, I, I wasn't planning to show my face actually. I wasn't ever planning to do videos so openly like this. I was really scared to put myself on the internet because people do stuff with the internet. <laughs> and so it's really, really scary. And I think a lot of you might be in the same boat. You might be really introverted like me. Like I'm actually extremely introverted. The most talking I ever do is for these kinds of videos. Like I don't really say much um, to anyone during most of the day, week or month. Yeah, but I was really shy on camera and it was really, really nerve wracking to be talking to a camera and it took a lot of getting used to. There were a lot of things I had to learn. It was not even just like learning how to film myself, but also learning how to edit myself in these videos and learning how to talk to the camera and be like trying to be natural without like freaking out. Like even now I still get a little bit nervous because I don't know, I, I'm self-conscious and I have insecurity like many people do. <laughs> it's going to be weird and uncomfortable when you first start like anything new but with time and practice, it gets way, way easier. I was really worried about putting myself on the internet. I was worried it would be way too personal. I didn't really feel comfortable showing people like my space, my mess, like my face when I wasn't wearing makeup. You know, it was, there were a lot of things I was really, really worried about, but for the most part, I learned, I don't think people really care that much, or if they do care, they're polite enough not to say anything, which I really appreciate, but really like, it was awkward and it took me a long time to get used to this, to doing camera work and filming and editing and all that stuff. And it's going to be awkward for you when you first start out vlogging. And the only way you're going to get better at it is by doing it. And your first videos are not going to be good. You're gonna make videos, they're not gonna be great. Like I have edited full videos that have never seen the light of day uh, cause they were super bad. <laughs> 
another thing that really helped me is I have filmed a lot of footage that I have never put anywhere just for practice, just to be able to talk to the camera and kind of get used to this exchange. I know I'm talking to you right now, but really I'm talking to a camera with a mic pointed at me. And the more I think about it, the more I get in my head and I'm actually starting to get nervous now. And I've been doing this for a year, right? I don't really know if the nerves will ever grow away, grow away, go away. Hopefully they will. The first time you edit your video of yourself is going to be super weird. I remember when I was first editing my own video, it was like an out of body experience. I was watching a complete stranger doing these things, but I knew it was myself and it was super, super weird. I'd also never heard myself talk so much in my entire life. Most people hate the sound of their own voice because you never really hear your voice from like, you know, outside your head. But now you're also not just listening to yourself talk, but also watching yourself do things and you realize really weird things about yourself and then you become hyper aware of it. <laughs> it gets a lot easier with time and practice. Like I know I keep saying it and it's not like a broken record, but the only way you're going to get comfortable doing YouTube videos is by doing it. And there's no other way around it. Like you're gonna have to just get in front of the camera, talk, practice, and learn to edit and see kind of what works it's going to be hard and for anyone who's really shy it's going to be really 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 difficult i'm sure but just remember that you know if you really don't want to show those first videos you can just edit them and just then shuffle them away like i did so i continued making videos once a week i did videos on like tutorials art business advice and then like vlogging i tried to vary it up a lot i did have a schedule to kind of keep things fresh and also to give myself just a little bit of breathing room of kind of making different kinds of content. Cause vlogging was actually one of the most time intensive things because I would basically be videoing the entire week and then I'd have to edit it all. Whereas videos like this, I can kind of just like sit and talk to you within one day and then I just have to edit it. I will admit there were times I was staying up till 4 a.m. editing a video and I still had work the next day. I'm trying now to manage my time better so that doesn't happen anymore but it it easily happens because filming and editing always takes way longer than you expect it to when i was first starting out a seven minute video vlog would take me like two or three days to edit because i was a noob and i didn't know what i was doing nowadays i can usually edit a week vlog within like eight to ten hours and i don't know if that's fast or slow like I have no frame of reference other than myself. I just know I'm faster than before. But even still, like, I don't think my editing skills are, are that good. I still think that there's a long way for me to go. I guess what I'm just saying is, it takes a long time to make a video, apparently. <laughs> I think another thing that was really, really hard for me is that vlogging and making videos on a weekly basis when you have to show up and show your face is really, really hard. A lot of times I was feeling very nervous or insecure. The other thing that I think that people don't really talk about is like when you aren't feeling well or if you're feeling sick, it's really, really hard to film. I think in the past year I made a video every single week. So I made at least one video every single week, except for I think three or four times I missed it. I think the first time I missed it was when Bosley passed away. Um, so. I, I didn't film that week, um, but the week after I did a vlog, which was also really hard um, because I don't think really people want to see me sad on, on film. That's not really fun. And I also don't really want to show myself like that, right? The other times I have not uploaded a video was because I was not mentally feeling well. I experienced a lot of burnout in the spring this year, and so I, I missed a few videos there. But for the most part, I did try to power through most of them. I, I always tried to make some type of video every single week. And it was really, really challenging to, to show up. And I, and I do want to put that out there that there is a like time pressure and, and all that stuff. And, and I know many YouTubers do that. They make one to two videos a week, but I also have a full-time job. I have an side art business. I work at a ceramic studio. I have an online shop. So it was a really, really huge time commitment for me to be making a video every single week. And I felt like sometimes the quality of my videos would suffer. Like they weren't as good as they could have been because I just simply didn't have time to put in more effort into them. Another thing I found myself doing, which I think is really interesting, is that I would put off doing things for the sake of oh, I want to film this later. For example, if I wanted to make a painting and I was feeling creative, but it was nighttime and the lighting wasn't good, I would hold off doing the painting until the weekend when I could film it. And I really, really hated that actually. Like 
it was the idea of like everything is content and I should be filming it. But then what ended up happening is I was stifling my own creativity. And I think like it's a very crazy thing that kind of happens. It's like that social media balance and stuff like that. And I think it's like a very quick way to have a toxic relationship with social media. And I'm still trying to figure out how to navigate that whole thing. But it is something that I did notice was happening more and more to the point where I had to consciously say, I'm going to make this thing just for fun and I'm not going to film it and I'm not going to feel guilty. So I mentioned I got monetized after seven months and you're probably wondering how much money I make each month after getting monetized. So to get monetized, you have to have at least 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watched hours within the past year. And so I have a small platform. I only have like, you know, a few thousand subscribers. I think that my views really come mainly from like my one tutorial that is performing really well. I would say like half my views are from that one video. For like the past five months or so, I can safely say that on average per month, I make about $90 a month. And that's from making about one YouTube video a week with ads at the start and the finish and videos that are about mm, 15 minutes on average, we'll say. That's after doing YouTube for seven months when I got monetized and then kind of like consistently for the past five months has it been about averaging like $90 a month, which honestly like is way more than I thought I was going to get. I was expecting to get like beans. So I'm pretty happy I'm getting anything at all. So then a really weird thing happened right after I got monetized. I started getting a bunch of emails offering collaborations and sponsorships. And it was really weird for me because that had never happened to me before. And I was like a very small fish in a big pond. Like I had just got monetized. And it was super, super exciting to have these opportunities. The only problem was that the types of places who are offering sponsorships and stuff like that weren't really relevant to my audience. So the types of collaborations I was getting were things like people asking to advertise their like video platforms or like classes or like I think I got an email for a collaboration with a vacuum cleaner company, which is kind of funny because at the time I wanted to get a new vacuum, but it just didn't seem relevant to you. And so while these opportunities were really, really cool, it felt really weird and disingenuous to be sponsoring these things when I had never actually used them myself. So I actually haven't worked with any sponsors officially. I have kind of done a few emailing back and forth, but never really came to a like agreement that would work for both parties, mainly because it wasn't really relevant to you. But if, hey, if anyone wants to sponsor me, on things that are relevant to an artist community, uh, send me an email. But yeah, I just kind of wanted to touch on sponsorships because I don't really know if people talk about that, but it was a weird thing that happened to me. And yeah, something that will happen to you, I guess, as you grow a channel. <laughs> and we have sound. Okay. <laughs> I had to refilm this outro because when I made before, I didn't really like it. So I'm filming it again. So what does that mean then for the next year of my art business and YouTube and all these things? I feel like when I was talking about it, I was kind of, I felt a little bit negative the way I was talking about it, but really I've been really happy actually working with YouTube and putting in all this effort with YouTube. I know I've been really tired of talking about like, you know, never having enough time to make these videos and stuff, but I do feel like it did what I wanted to do, which was to grow my audience and have bigger reach. And it does give me the opportunity to talk kind of more in depth about my art journey and my process. That being said, um, I also have been kind of enjoying taking it a little bit easier in the past few weeks. I haven't been uploading a video every single week because as I mentioned, you know, I was, I was really burnt out. So I do want to continue working on YouTube. I still want to make videos on YouTube. I feel like it gives you kind of this organic reach that other platforms don't really give you. And for anyone else who's really interested in trying out YouTube, like, yeah, it's a lot of work, but I think there's a really big return. I think it really gives you an opportunity to kind of go more in depth about your work and, and your personality and, and things that, you know, an image on Instagram can't really say about you. But in the next year, I do want to focus on making better videos. <laughs> and to do that, I think I need to find a different, I don't know, I kind of want to find a different schedule to post on, but it's really hard for me to just suddenly stop making videos every week because I've been doing it kind of consistently for a year. And I still want to be able to do that if I can. However, I think I've kind of decided that this summer, I'm going to try to take it a little bit easier as I reassess how to make good YouTube videos for you. So 
what I think I'm gonna do is I think for the summer at least, I'm gonna be releasing a video every other week, which will give me an opportunity to finally make those videos and tutorial videos that guys have been asking about because I just simply haven't had time to do that. And I think that with a, you know, more relaxed schedule in the summer, it gives me a chance to get energized again and also make better video content for you. I guess that kind of wraps it up and kind of explains how the past year has gone. I hope it was insightful and you maybe learned a thing or two. Maybe it helped you figure out if you want to do YouTube or not. So I think that's about it. I've talked a lot. If there's anything I missed, please go ahead and leave a comment down below. And as the YouTubers say, if you like this video, please go ahead and like and subscribe. It does really, really help grow my channel. And I'm realizing now that I just refer to myself as a YouTuber, which is really, really weird. I don't think I've ever thought of myself as that before. I think that's it. There's a lot of talking. Thank you so much. I hope that this video was helpful and insightful and maybe helps you figure out if you want to try YouTube or not. So yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> I'm still so awkward after doing this for a year. Just thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. What are you doing? Why are you so surprised? I know I should.